President Rodrigo Duterte places the entire island of Luzon on enhanced community quarantine to contain the spread of the coronavirus disease until April 12. I have come to the conclusion that stricter measures are necessary. For this reason, pursuant to my powers as President under the Constitution and Republic Act 11332, I am placing the entire mainland of Luzon under quarantine until April, uh, April 12, 2020. Under the new measure, strict quarantine for all households will be implemented, transportation will be suspended, and provision for food and essential health services will be regulated. The order will also increase the presence of uniformed personnel to enforce the strict quarantine measures across eight regions, including Metro Manila. Since the start of the government's community quarantine on midnight of Sunday, March 15, gaps in implementation exposed the challenge of enforcing the lockdown through checkpoints, where millions of commuters pass in and out of Metro Manila. Health officials earlier reported a steep increase in infections with the number of confirmed cases in the Philippines, spiking from 6 to 140 in the span of a week. The death toll in the Philippines has already reached 12 as of Monday afternoon. Around the world, the virus infected over 169,000 people and killed more than 6,000. Over 77,000 have recovered. In related news, Senator Mig Zubiri tests positive for the novel coronavirus. Zubiri has been in self-quarantine since Wednesday, March 7, and was tested Friday. In his official Facebook page, Zubiri says he is currently asymptomatic. Zubiri says, quote, I practice social distancing as well as a no-handshake policy, yet I got contaminated. How? I do not know. This just goes to show how easily this virus is spread and therefore it is best for everyone to stay home and stay clean. Zubiri says he will continue to be in isolation for 10 more days until he gets checked again and is hoping for a negative result. In Metro Manila, the Department of Transportation's policy of reduced passenger capacity, in line with social distancing, to prevent the spread of the coronavirus creates a shortage in public transportation. It even forces several public utility vehicle drivers and operators to stop operations. Napakahirap sumakay sa talaba kasi merong distancing, you know? Kung ito yun ano yung distancing, marami sanang sasakyan na available. Meantime, workers commuting to Metro Manila say they brave the traffic and the threat of the spreading coronavirus because there is no work from home privilege for them. Siyempre, kailangan talaga for family na rin eh kasi no work no pay kami kaya kailangan pumasok. Health workers deployed to the borders of Metro Manila and nearby provinces say they are under-equipped and undermanned. They also note there is a shortage in thermal guns that will allow authorities to check the temperature of commuters. Meanwhile, Malabon joins other cities in Metro Manila in implementing the 8 p.m. to 5 a.m. curfew, while the provinces of Cavite, Zamboanga del Norte, and Muntinlupa City declare a state of calamity. The provinces of Ilocos Sur and La Union, and cities of Marawi, Iligan, Valencia, and Cebu all declare community quarantine. In Davao, Mayor Sara Duterte threatens Iglesia Ni Cristo leaders with legal action if they continue to hold worship services even after she placed the city under community quarantine. Duterte suspended mass gatherings, including religious activities, in the city. In a statement, Duterte also urges INC members not to attend their worship services to prevent the spread of the novel coronavirus. She adds INC leaders should not expel members for not attending their worship services. The Department of Trade and Industry issues a memorandum limiting people going inside grocery stores to minimize the risk of spreading the novel coronavirus. Grocery stores and supermarkets will remain open during the lockdown in Luzon. The DTI says there should only be one person for every square meter of free space in the store. In Pasig City, Mayor Vico Soto announces the city government will penalize people who are caught hoarding food and other goods at stores and markets. Soto implements the anti-panic buying and anti-hoarding ordinance, limiting the number or amount of goods consumers and resellers may purchase every day. Philippine shares dropped further on Monday, March 16, 
as businesses take a hit because of the pandemic. The Philippine Stock Exchange Index closes at 5,335, 7.9% lower than the figure on Friday, March 13, pushing the market nearer to bear territory. A bear market indicates shares are trading below 20% from their last all-time high. The threshold, which is around 6,600, was recently breached. The circuit breaker or 15-minute trading halt was triggered twice last week, as shares fell by over 10%. With markets around the world plummeting, United Nations Chief Antonio Guterres urges governments to work together to stop the pandemic from plunging the global economy into recession. Among the hardest-hit businesses are the aviation and tourism industries. Budget airline Cebu Pacific lays off 150 newly hired cabin crew as several provinces and cities restrict flight travel. This comes after airline executives voluntarily took pay cuts starting March to avoid layoffs. Meantime, workers of Lusotan-owned MacroAsia, an aviation support services company, are taking unpaid leaves. In a letter to the Philippine Stock Exchange on Monday, March 16, MacroAsia says a rotating voluntary no-work, no-pay schedule is being implemented on all pay grades, as the company loses revenues. Top management is also taking a 10% pay cut. MacroAsia says it is losing almost 300 million pesos a month due to travel bans. Meantime, the office of Vice President Lenny Robredo and its partner donors were able to raise as much as 12.3 million pesos to buy more personal protective equipment sets for health workers. According to Robredo's official Facebook account, the OVP starts distributing the first batch of sets for some 1,000 frontliners on Monday, March 16. U.S. nightlife capitals New York and Los Angeles order bars and restaurants to close or go takeout only as the country scrambles to contain the coronavirus pandemic. The fast-spreading outbreak claimed almost 70 lives in the United States. Faced with an economic shutdown, the U.S. Federal Reserve announces emergency measures to shore up confidence and keep the financial sector running. President Donald Trump expresses confidence in the Fed's move. In an address to the nation, Trump tells the public, relax, we're doing great. It all will pass. In Hong Kong, rival political camps embrace a new tactic to woo potential voters, free face masks. Politicians from both the resurgent pro-democracy camp and their embattled pro-Beijing rivals take advantage of the shortage even before official campaigning kicks off for the city's legislature elections in September. Three pro-democracy parties secure 1.2 million masks from Honduras. The move did not go unnoticed. And one week later, the pro-Beijing camp announced they had one million masks of their own to give away. 